Welcome back everybody. So this is part two of the LeBron 22 Crown Jewel review. Um, in part one, we kind of focused on the materials, the design, the storytelling elements of the LeBron 22. In part two, we're gonna focus on the overall performance and every individual component that makes the shoe what it is. But before we get into the video, if you can like, subscribe and comment, any engagement at all really helps the video to get exposure and helps the channel to continue to grow. And I will be eternally grateful for everything that you all continue to do. But without further ado, Let's get into this review. So we're gonna start things off with the fit and containment of the LeBron 22. Uh, fit and containment was fantastic. The overall fit of the shoe, when you're talking about sizing, I went true to size, my true size is 12, and they fit almost perfectly when you're playing in a shoe when you have a fit that, the, that is this good, you start thinking about the one-to-one -one fit where the shoe itself kind of um, acts as a second skin to your feet. Obviously it's protection, but with the way these fit my feet, um, they fit very, very good. So in terms of the actual experience on the court, I played on two different types of courts. Um, one, a wooden court, and then the other, like a composite type of court, one that you would probably find on an outdoor court, but it was actually indoors. Um, I had no issues with the fit. I had no issues with containment. They had the foot saddle that obviously is intended to keep your foot on the footbed, but you also have this like massive outrigger that is intended for containment as well, uh, lateral containment and things like that. So you can make those cuts and things of that nature and make them confidently. You're not, you don't have to worry about your foot kind of tipping over or anything like that. So fin containment was very, very good on the LeBron 22. Now over on the cushioning side, you do have a uh, setup that is a pretty typical LeBron style setup. Um, he does enjoy zoom units in a lot of his shoes. So you have a turbo zoom unit in the forefoot and then you actually have a pretty substantial heel zoom unit and that's bottom loaded and that's for impact protection in the forefoot is top loaded. Um, and then you have a cushion carrier all throughout the midsole of the shoe. Um, in playing in the shoe, roughly about six to seven hours and then probably about 10 hours of casual wear, you definitely feel these zoom units in the forefoot and heel. It provides max protection uh, max responsiveness in terms of just that zoom bounce that you come to expect at this point. Um, in playing in the shoe, especially in one of my longer sessions, I played for about two hours straight um, of just like five on fives. And what I would say is that because there's so much bounce and so much feedback, it probably extends the amount of time you're able to play and things like that, just because you're not exerting all of that energy to get up and down the court. For me, I played again about two hours straight and then roughly about four to five hours of like one-on-one -on -one basketball. And I just really, really enjoyed that setup, that bounce that I got. Um, it was a very fun shoe to play in, in that respect. Now, in terms of what you want out of the shoe in terms of the cushioning, if you are a guard type of player, smaller player who prefers court fuel lower to the ground cushioning, you're obviously not gonna find it in this because these zoom units are so substantial. But if you're someone who is looking for max protect, even if you're big or you're a guard type of player, smaller player, and you prefer max protection, you prefer you know just a lot of cushioning, a lot of bounce, you're gonna find it in this shoe and you're gonna love it. Um, I really, really enjoyed my time, especially because of the cushioning in the LeBron 22. Now, the LeBron 22 was fantastic in just about every respect with one glaring issue that worried me from the very beginning, which was the traction. Um, based on the traction pattern itself, it is a kind of like a geometric shape type of pattern that has treads going all over the place. And in theory, that should be very effective on a court. Now we're going away from what we saw on the LeBron 20, the 21, the next gen and next gen amps, where it had that city map type of storytelling pattern. And that worked very, very well. On the LeBron 22, I found myself slipping and sliding. I never really got any good grip. I tried wiping and, and things like that and it never just, never bit onto the court and that was very, very disappointing. Um, after about an hour and a half, I was worried. I talked about it on a subreddit post and then I played in them more and I just continued to have those issues. Um, so I would say that the traction on the LeBron 22 was a big failure. Unfortunately, now it could be a possibility that this glow in, the, glow in the dark outsole is contributing to those issues that I had and maybe a solid outsole will help in the future. But again, in about five hours of actual play time, I never got any good grip even after wiping and things like that. So that's something to be aware of. That's 
that's probably going to be a, be a big failure for a lot of people, regardless of uh, the position that you're playing, whether you're big or uh, a guard style player. Traction is incredibly important and the rest of the shoe doesn't matter if you don't get the traction right. Now when it comes to the overall performance for the LeBron 22, this is a shoe I was extremely excited to play in uh, just from the design itself i think it is a cool looking shoe i know it is a divisive opinion i know there's a lot of people that hate the design i know there's a lot of people who love the design i'm in the camp of loving the design but in terms of just the performance itself um, when it comes to the cushioning obviously i talked about it at nauseum but the four foot zoom unit that turbo zoom unit is fantastic it provides a lot of bounce, a lot of feedback. Um, that heel zoom unit is massive and provides a lot of impact protection. The Cushlon carrier adds that like firmness and stability. Um, so I, I just really enjoyed the cushioning aspect. The fit and containment part of it, the fit was fantastic. It was probably one of the best fitting LeBrons that I've had in a while. Uh, so if you are looking again for a size recommendation, I would definitely recommend going true to size for me. My true size is 12, fit perfectly. Um, had a little bit of issue with heel slip, as I said earlier, I just tied my shoes a little bit tighter that resolved that issue. In terms of the uh, containment and things like that, you have the heel saddle or their foot saddle that really helps with that lateral containment, but you also have that gigantic uh, or that massive outrigger that's really going to kind of keep your foot stable. Nothing that you would see like compared to the LeBron 15 where it didn't have an outrigger and your foot's kind of like falling or sliding all over the place. The one area that the shoe did fail me in was unfortunately the traction. And in my opinion, if you don't have traction, everything else that the shoe does well is kind of negated by the fact that the traction fails the shoe. In terms of a recommendation for the LeBron 22, while it looks great and features a lot of great technology, um, the traction tends to be suspect for me, at least at this point. At $180, it's kind of hard to recommend the LeBron 22, um, especially with the traction being as suspect as it was for me, at least. If you really want to give the shoe a try, uh, you definitely have the confidence, confidence in knowing that Nike.com on the US side offers a 60-day return policy, and that's a wear test policy. So what that means is you can buy the LeBron 22, you can play in them, you can scuff them up and things like that, the natural things that happen when you're playing basketball. And within that 60 days, if you decide that you wanna return them because they just aren't kind of holding up their end of the bargain or they're failing you in certain respects, then you can return them and get your full refund, which is a fantastic and generous return policy and kind of lets you buy with confidence. But either way, that's gonna do it for this video. If there's anything I miss or anything you would like to know about the LeBron 22, leave a comment. If you like this video, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it but if you really really liked it please hit that subscribe button thank you all for watching and you have a great day